Hi, I'm Gary. This is Gary's stuff, and and wait, wait a minute. Can you hear a Merlin engine? Hello there, I'm Gary, um, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. I'm a little overexcited because today I took delivery of my copy of the brand new Airfix Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9C in 124th scale. The new super kit from Airfix has landed. I'll have a look at what you get inside this kit for your not inconsiderable amount of money. I'll have a look at what aftermarket options are currently available, see if there's anything else in the making, and of course, I'll have a look at what other kits are around of that and similar sizes that you can look at. Um, all of these bits come as chapters, so you can hop back and forth as your heart desires. Now, if you enjoy the show today, remember Imperial thumbs up on the button below. And of course, if you want to see all the future videos, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe hit the bell and you'll be notified when all the build videos come up and there's going to be a few of them. Let's be honest, it's quite a big kit. And of course, if you'd like to support future production on the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks or indeed through any of my partner programs. Ethics first made a 124th scale Spitfire, a Mark 1A, all the way back in 1970. It went through several re-releases, pretty much with each style change in box design. The FX kit was also marketed by MPC in various guises from 1971 into the mid 80s. Unusually, through a 35 year old tooling, FX added new parts in 2005 to create the Mark 5B. This was even released as a gift set in 2008 with two brushes, some glue and 12 pots of Humbrol acrylics. By 2011, the paint count had risen to 15 pots, but in 2013 it reverted to a regular kit, albeit with new decals. In 2020, the original Mark 1A was re-released as a vintage classics kit, paving the way for this new 2022 tooling we're looking at today. In 2003, Trumpeter released a 124th kit of the Mark 5B, a kit also marketed by Hobbycraft. The following year, Trumpeter bought out the Mark 5 as the remarkable float plane. The year after that, they also released a tropical Mark 5 with clipped wing, and after that, a Mark 6 with the extended wingtips. The box is, of course, huge. Um, the unusual thing is the finish is more of a satin. You know, you're used to that ultra-high gloss look where the reds and the blacks really pop out, and they don't on this. So I'm assuming it makes it more recyclable or, you know, heaven for fence, cheaper to print, maybe. I don't know. But the box lid oh, doesn't want to come off. <laughs> Come on, I've paid for you. I have paid for you, honestly. Let me see what's inside. There we go. Now, I do recall when we had the uh, YouTube Creators Day back in July, they said they were looking at alternatives to the massive amount of plastic bags they normally use because uh, here they are um, doing this in England, they have more control. And I think this is self-evident now. So between each of these frames is some brown paper. 
Well, between the bigger frames anyway. When we get to the smaller frames, we're back to plastic bags again. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five plastic bags. But, do you know, there was at least a little nod towards maybe not using plastic everywhere, I guess. Um, lots and lots and lots of frames here to go through. We'll go through all of them in a moment. At the bottom, of course, is the large, compendious and full instruction sheets. There's the equally large and compendious decal sheets, and placement sheets and things like that. And of course, the enormously large decals will have a good old look at these. Okay, let's have a look at some of the detail. Sprue A, frame A, if you like, are the two main fuselage halves. Frame B is the one piece bottom half of the main wings. Frame C, the top halves of the wings and main spar. Frame D is mostly cockpit interior, instrument panels, uh, the sides of sidewalls of the fuselage, straps, bottles, rudder bars, that sort of thing, gear, uh, control lever. All the interiors of the cockpit, basically. Frame E is um, another frame for the interior bits and pieces. I'm not sure what some of these are. In fact, I'm not sure what most of these are. These are like parts of the engine covers or maybe parts of the tail. Can't really see yet. We'll find out later on what all these bits are for sure. But anyway, that's frame E. Frame F, um, the part, inner parts of the wings, the formers, uh, cannon rounds, gun barrels, cannon barrels, stuff like that. Frame G, the cannon barrels, tail surfaces, flying surfaces, uh, the regular wing tips, this can be done with regular or clipped wings, and the radiator parts are here as well. Frame H has got the horizontal stabilizers, vertical stabilizers, each of them come as two different types, therefore there's two rudders and two sets of elevators. Um, the rudders have got the uh, pointier, large area types, like the uh, large cord ones as well. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between the types of stabilizers here, the horizontal stabilizers, they've got a different sort of balance area. I guess of the elevator but we'll have a closer look at that when we do the build. Frame J, um, main wheels basically, main wheels and the tail wheel. And frame K is essentially the Merlin engine uh, with its mountings and so on and so forth, superchargers and the like. All the bits for the engine are on this frame. And frame L, frame L are the main engine covers, uh, the outside framing for the engine covers, propellers, prop bosses and things like that. Frames M here on the left and N here on the right. Uh, M is the top cover for the engine. N, um, these appear to be gun barrels for the cannon. That, radio mast um, door, the, the entry door, various versions of that. Anyway, all very nicely moulded though. And finally frame X, which are the transparent parts. Uh, these are the ends of the wings if you want to use the clipped wings. There are instrument panels here, windscreen, uh, rear screen, rear window cover, lights, gun, port, uh, gun sights, all sorts of things like that. Two versions of the main canopy, we'll have a look at those in a little more detail in a while. As for the plastic, it's all very nice, it feels you know, like regular airfix plastic to be honest with you. Um, 
the detailing you can see there all the rivets seem to be there um, panelling's nice the little flaps over the filler pots are nice little bits of relief where I suspect there should be relief yeah, it all looks very good, all very clean, all very well moulded. There's no obvious flash anywhere at all, which there shouldn't be really on a kit this young. But anyway, inside the all the interior is modelled in case you can actually see it through any part there. The one part that really isn't modelled, and no reason why it should be because they, you know they didn't do it. If you're to do this as a reconnaissance aircraft, you're going to have to do something about this panel. You can cut a hole in here obviously but the um, the riveting you'll probably have to do something about if you want to make a photo reconnaissance version. But then that's going to be the least of your worries since you're not going to have any uh, armaments and various other bits and pieces and you're going to have to put a camera inside it if you put a window on it. So anyway, it's um, it all looks very good, all looks very nice. Likewise the wing sections all look very lovely. Um, well, I, I'm going to guess all the rivetings there, I'm not going to count them. I hope none of you are either because that's really not great. Um, obviously all the gun areas can be opened which is fantastic. Um, this is a, a small thing, when the flaps are down there's a little thing that pops up here so the actuator can come through, it hasn't got any room to do it otherwise. I would claim credit for that sort of detailed knowledge but I saw it on the built model at Telford and I had to ask Chris the designer what it was and he told me. Inside of the uh, undercarriage bay uh, obviously you can have the flaps open so all the ribbing of the flap bays are there as well. And of course the engine which you know, people are going to want to show off no doubt. Um, yeah the parts look all very lovely. It's do you know, it's, it's the thing with Airfix kits I've noticed, and they build, even like things of the Anson, they're built beautifully and the detailing's nice, is that when you first look at them, they look just a tiny bit soft and a tiny bit milky. Then when you put them together, they're not. They're actually really, really nice. But the plastic at first glance looks just a little bit soft. But it, I know it isn't, um, but it just looks a little bit like that. But there might be reasons for that, and I might be able to find out what they are. But all the framing looks great, all of the structures look strong enough. They're all going to go together very nicely. Right, just going to have a look at the um, transparent parts again, just for a moment. Um, we've got two canopies here. Now, this one is, um, you can use it any time. This one is slightly larger, slightly more bulged, and this is the more accurate one. Now, the thing Airfix say is that on this, you have a very slight seam in the middle. Now, I don't know if you're about to see that. Let me try and... Um, can you see just about here? It's a seam that runs right through the middle. Now, they say it's impossible for them to make this canopy the absolutely accurate one, bulged enough without that seam. This is one, it's slightly smaller, but there's no seam on it. So either go absolutely accurate and try and polish out that seam or live with the fact there's a seam there, or use the slightly less accurate one, which uh, doesn't have a seam. That's up to you. The instruments are on here as well. Um, I guess this is for if you're fitting the decals over them, and this is for if you're sort of dry brushing and doing every, everything yourself. Of course, if you're going aftermarket, you'll just use this, flatten it, and then put on your aftermarket set anyway. The instruction booklet is, by ethics standards, quite thick. Um, first couple of pages are just history of the aircraft in various languages. This is a new departure, this colour chart showing you what all the colours are and giving you an idea of what they look like. Obviously it's not going to be absolutely 100% certain, but for the first time I can remember seeing, it tells you what 11 is, 26 is, 29 is, 30. I'm not expecting you to know the whole range of Humbrol colours. 
They tell you what they are. Bravo at last. Well done, Airfix. I'm so glad you did that. Um, there's a lot of colours that can be used, but of course not all of them are used for every single version of it. There's a lovely thing about the cockpit decals, where they all go. Um, all the major instruments are individual decals, which at this scale you'd kind of expect that they would be. Lots of placement decals on all sorts of other bits and pieces, even like the gas bottles and so on and so forth. Excellent, like that a lot. Thereafter, the instructions are pretty much as usual. Um, there's occasionally a bit of colouring to show you where, where paint goes on. Other than that, it's the usual thing, red bits of things that you've just done. Uh, standard three-quarter um, orthographic projection, very clear. Lots of options, again, more colouring information here. Probably cost them a bit more to paint to uh, paint this to to print this, um, but you know there we go. Lots of options here on the elevators and the fins, as we said. Loads of parts to go in here in the inside of the wing. Um, all sorts of things: what you do, what you don't do. We've got the bays open. Haven't got the base open. The engine is kind of interesting in that um, there's part of the engine that you still make. Whether or not you're showing the engine is irrelevant in that respect. You still need to use some of the structure and some of the engine to form the forward structure of the aircraft. So you need to do a lot of it. Um, it says to get up to. 135 and then miss out steps 136 to 198 so yeah here we go you can see if you're you still have to do all the backing of all of the panels so that they sit properly together and there's a basic bit of engine with the propeller axle on here the drive shaft here that goes through the front of the nose if you're not doing all of that then you can do all the engine bits as well, the other rest of the engine bits I should say, and there's plenty of them. Engine mountings, all sorts of things. And there we go, there's, there's more than enough to keep you busy. Um, flaps up or down as I've mentioned before, uh, the individual um, fishtail exhausts get made, fantastic. Everything's weighted including the tail wheel for the first time I've seen that for a while. Um, quite a nice little complex bit of gun sight manufacture there to do. All looking very good. Well, let's talk through some of the scheme options, or all of the scheme options. In fact, the first one, scheme A, is Mike Lima 214, flown by Johnny Plagius of 126 Persian Golf Squadron. Um, the options Actually, this thing's full of options. You can have it either for June or December 44. June 44, you had the uh, larger invasion stripes. Later on, they, they, the invasion stripes got knocked back because you didn't need them all. And scheme B is Echo November 398, flown by Ian Kelty, Flight Lieutenant Ian Kelty, 402 sitting of Winnipeg. Squadron in 1943. Like the Popeye decals there. Scheme C is again Echo November 398, as later flown by Wing Commander Johnny Johnson, 402 Squadron City of Winnipeg. Um, based at Kenley, this one's in 1943 with his JEJ, James Edgar Johnson, personalised letters. And D is uh, markings for an American aircraft, 309th Fighter Squadron, 31st Fighter Group of US Army Air Force in Italy in 1943, as flown by Captain Garth Jarrett, who was the squadron CO. Interesting things on here are that some of the markings have been overpainted, the RF markings have been overpainted, and because the colours will look different where they've been overpainted with fresher paint, for example, then you have some uh, templates here so that you know how big the 
uh, overpaint area can be so you can make it look a bit more realistic I guess or more authentic anyway Scheme E is a slightly more flamboyant aircraft um, from the uh, JAR-233 Savoie squadron of the French Air Force, La Médélaire, that looks Le Bain, in 1945. You'll know that this, this is the clipped wing version. Lots of beautiful yellow stripes and, of course, the French decal markings, which, again, on the wings, there's a... Uh, the large RAF decals have been painted out, so there's a template for you to make sure that that is the right size. Very smart. And finally, there are the common stencils. This being an early aircraft in the war and British, there are not that many stencils to worry about, even at this scale. Um, a few things saying, don't push this. What are you thinking of? Leave this alone. Um, don't touch that. You really don't need to know what's in here, so leave it alone, basically. But really not that many of them, fortunately. Imagine a phantom at this scale. There'll be, be like 2,000 stencils. And, of course, the decal sheet, as usual, printed by TechMod. They are lovely and detailed, very rich colours, beautiful registration. They really suit the size. Look at this, the size of this beastie here. Um, obviously, you can get aftermarket as well, but these are really, really lovely. I'll have a look at some a bit closer in. There you go. Hopefully, you can see how sharp these are. These are all the instrument decals here. See if I can get a bit closer. Um, beautifully printed, beautifully presented. Really nice. They're going to go so well. Markings are ground. Look at that, that fuselage art there. Lovely. And there's uh, the aforementioned Popeye we saw earlier. On the side of the box, as usual, as a skill, and the flying out skill is level four. Well, there's no surprise at that. Um, I suspect it would have been level five if they had five. And you get four flying hours for this. I think four flying hours, do you know what? That's a little bit stingy for something that retails at over £90. Um, it's going to take a lot of building. I think four flying hours is not much of a thank you, is it, really? Anyway, there's also the um, paint call-outs, again, on the side, just by numbers, and some schemes are shown here. All the five schemes in the box are shown here as well. So there it is, finally, in all its glory. This is going to take some building, I can tell you. Also in the box is this um, triangular thing which contains a poster. It's a, an A2 version of the box art. The 126 Squadron aircraft flying over the D-Day fleet. Do you know it's nice enough, but... You know, it's cost me 80-something pounds, even with my discount, 80-something pounds for this kit. I'm not going to now spend a load of money buying a frame for this. But anyway, I suppose it's a nice gesture. As you might imagine with such a new kit, the aftermarket has yet to really catch up. However... There are many sets of alternative decals available, such as those from Kitsworld, Eagle Cows, Extra Decal and Dutch Decal. Top Notch has a set of camouflage masks for the RAF Northern Temperate Scheme, as in this example of the Johnny Johnson aircraft. Kitsworld also do have a replacement instrument panel in 3D printed decals, and there is a replacement wheel set from Barracuda with all the tyre markings. Barracuda will also sell your pilot standing next to his plane between sorties, as will PJ Productions. But there will be many, many more items coming very soon. There it is, a formidable thing, I'm sure you'll agree. It's going to be um, quite the challenge to build in the fairly restricted size area I have. It's going to be a challenge to know where to put the model once it's finished as well, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, 
we'll, we'll overcome these minor difficulties. That's what we do. If you enjoyed the show, please remember Imperial Thumbs Up on the button below. And if you want to see future productions, then please subscribe, hit the bell. You'll be notified when all my new videos turn up. And of course, if you just sort of stuck for something to do on a wintry evening in the winter, why not just go through my back catalogue and have a look at all the other builds I've done so far. Thank you so much for watching. Do please come back for the builds. There's going to be a lot of them. And I will see you next time. Goodbye now. Thank you.